Okay, let's start about let's talk about getting started in your business. Basically, deciding whether to just start from scratch, bottom up with a clean sheet of paper, or opening up and starting with a franchising opportunity. Let's get let's talk about just starting from scratch. Although entrepreneurs entrepreneurs often start businesses just from the bottom up, their own idea from the beginning, uh, starting from scratch. Uh, that's what we'll discuss here. Uh, they may elect to buy an existing business even more so than than starting from scratch. This this either starting up your own or buying an existing business has several advantages. With they have a built-in network of customers, suppliers, distributors, whatever, um, and some guesswork. Starting from scratch can be very expensive. It means getting rent, you know, putting all the fittings up, having to make tons of decisions about how you're going to present yourself as an organization and how you're going to present your products and customers to people. Uh, it takes a while perhaps to get started. Buying an existing business has the advantages of, uh, as we said, some built-in built -in network of some customers, distributors, suppliers. You can make all the changes you want. But essentially, it's an opportunity to start off, hit the ground running with an up and going operation. Particularly if you haven't done it before, it tells you, it gives you some sense of all the various aspects of the business that you need to be caring for. Uh, however, if you're the entrepreneur who buys an existing business also takes on any problems that that business might have. An alternative is franchising. Many small business owners find entry into the business world through franchising to be a very good opportunity because much of the process of running a business is thought out and is available from some of the policies and procedures offered by the franchisor. Um, a license a franchise is a license to sell another person's products or use another's name in their business or both of these. That's what's called a franchise, essentially how you run a business and what the products and services are uh, under certain uh, certain restrictions is a franchise. The company that sells a franchise is the franchisor. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts, Subway, Jiffy Lube, these are all some well-known franchisors uh, with national visibility. The purchaser of the franchise is called the franchisee. The franchisee acquires the rights to use the name, the logo, methods of operation, national advertising products, and other elements uh, that the franchisor's business uh, provides in return for a commitment to provide some level of payment to back to the franchisor for the use of their products and services. This is called the franchisor's agreement and it operates according to the franchisor's standard of operations. You have to run the business the way they want you to run the business. You're in charge, but you have to run the business the way they want you to run the business. They're trying to maintain their reputation and their brand. You get from them some of the products and services and whatever, and also descriptions of how to do certain things associated with the business. So it benefits uh, both sides. That's the notion of a franchise, of uh, the franchise agreement. Some of the advantages of franchisers is that uh, it allows you the opportunity to, to start a small business relatively quickly. Uh, it has an association with an established brand. The franchise outlet can reach break even point much faster oftentimes. Um, and it also has some other advantages like management training and support, brand name appeal, standardized quality, national advertising potentially, financial assistance sometimes, proven products and business formats, centralized buying power because you're working within this larger organization. They help with site selection and territorial protection. You're the only franchise in a certain territory with that brand. And uh, they do offer a greater chance of success because you're operating within a structure that is already proven and already works. It's harder to make mistakes. Still a lot of mistakes that can be made, but it's harder to make mistakes because people have already, uh, the, the organization has already learned from other people's mistakes. Some of the disadvantages of franchises are that there is a fees. You have to pay for all this stuff you're getting and some profit sharing. Uh, sometimes you have to follow strictly, the strictly adhere to standard operations. Uh, you have to purchase from certain suppliers, usually or often the franchisor who makes money there from those purchases. It's a limited product line. Sometimes you're not allowed to launch other products. You have possible market saturation of those other franchisor in surrounding territories. Less 
freedom in the business selections that are being made, um, those kinds of things. Strict uniformity, you have to follow the particular rules of the road for that particular franchise. Uh, entrepreneurs who want to be their own bosses come, sometimes can get frustrated by having to operate according to the restrictions and the rules of the franchisor. Here's some examples of some of the biggest and fastest growing franchises that in different areas, uh, anywhere from restaurants to tax services, uh, jazzercise clinics, uh, those kinds of things, different kinds of franchises that you might um, and it might, might identify and you can see that these uh, some of them have been around a long time some of them are new here's some examples of new ones that you can see Kona Ice and uh, this, uh, this is Smash Smashburger not all that new as a business but it's still uh, in the fast growth stage so there's very different many different kinds of franchises that one one can purchase and develop uh, the, fran the concept of franchising grew especially rapidly during the 1960s when it expanded to diverse industries, and you can see uh, some of these uh, these these uh, fr these franchises are quite interesting. So this is uh, one area to think about. You want to be your own boss. You want to give it a try. You can learn from a franchise. Sometimes people learn from franchising and then start their own firms because they've essentially learned the ropes of how to run a small business. There's also help for small business managers. Uh, it's, it's such a, cru a crucial role in the economy that, uh, that the U.S. government has offered has some organizations to help uh, small business owners' ability to compete. These include entrepreneurial training programs and programs sponsored by the Small Business Administration. They provide small business owners with invaluable assistance in managing their enterprises. Uh, they offer their little. They serve at little at no cost because of some, there, there's benefits to all to support entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial success. You can learn marketing, management, finance skills. There's college courses associated with that and how to do that, how to how to build these skills, uh, help build business judgment. Then there are national publications that are also extremely helpful, like Inc. Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine. They can share statistics and the like that can help. Small Business Administration is one really good place to go among the many pro, uh, programs they have is the SB, SBA funds. They fund small business development centers around in various universities and other settings that can help business owners. There's clinics uh, where people can talk about their business uh, ideas and their business plans and get support. Uh, there's a service of service corp of retired executives called SCORE which people that have run businesses before are around to help get people up and running in their small businesses, uh, various kinds of chambers and co chambers of commerce, small business institutes um, around that are helping people uh, to get their businesses up and running. And of course, the local, uh, the U.S. and local departments of commerce and chambers of commerce in various communities are also helpful in getting businesses up and running. And of course, people often like to help other small businesses uh, succeed because when the small business community is healthy within um, a local economy, the, uh, there tends to be a lot of foot traffic and a lot of things that, are, that uh, causes a dynamic community. And so there's a lot of uh, individual help among businesses. You wanna be networking uh, within the business communities where, where you work and where you open your business. In the next lecture, we'll talk about some of the new trends, trends in business formation, uh, things to be looking at and to consider.